Hey guys, so this week we're going to be covering 3.1 and 3.2, so we're in a new unit. Um, this unit we're going to be learning about quadratic functions, so a new set of functions. Um, and 3.1 we're going to learn how to graph them, okay, so there's a lot more graphing that's going to happen here. We learned about how to multiply polynomials, we learned a lot about polynomials before, so now it's more about graphing. So, first to go over some definition, what is a quadratic function? A quadratic function is a nonlinear it's a nonlinear function that can be written in the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c and a cannot equal zero. Okay, so this is the form that it's going to look like. And a cannot equal zero because if a equals zero, then this term cancels. Then we have bx plus c, and this is a linear function. But remember that a quadratic function is nonlinear. Okay, so a quadratic function is a function of the second degree. A polynomial of the second degree, sorry. Um, a parabola is the U shaped function. Okay, so a parabola is pretty much a quadratic function. Or it's the shape that the quadratic function makes, because a quadratic function looks like a U shaped, whether it's up or down upside down you or a right side up you. So that's what a parabola is. And the vertex is the lowest or highest point of the parabola. So, like right here is the lowest point, and right here is the highest point. And we've used vertex before. We used the vertex um, in uh, absolute value functions because they also have a lowest or highest point. Okay, so the vertex is just the lowest or the highest point, and we write it as a value of x comma y. It's a point. Um, and the axis of symmetry is the vertical line. that divides the parabola into two symmetrical halves. So you see that a u-shaped function is symmetrical. If you were to draw a line and cut it in half, a vertical line, it's symmetrical. You could mirror these uh, it over this line and you would get the same the, the same shape. So it is a symmetrical function, much like the the, the absolute value function. Okay. So um, just some how to, how to graph, okay? So the the graphing of parabolas or quadratic functions is actually very, very similar um, to, if not exactly the same as graphing um, of uh, graphing absolute value functions. A little bit different. I, I shouldn't say it's exactly the same. It's different. But you use the transformations the same way. Okay. So for this first part, we're just going to be talking about vertical stretches and shrinks of parabolas okay, and uh, quadratic functions. So here, when you're trying to graph f of x is equal to a x squared, much of like uh, with absolute value functions, we graph f of x is equal to the uh, a times absolute value of x, right? Well now, for a quadratic function, it's a times uh, x squared, okay? So they're very, very similar. So, and if the function, so if a is between 0 and 1, so if it's like a fraction, like one half or two thirds or one fourth or something like that, then you have a vertical stretch 
uh, sorry, a vertical shrink of the the function y uh, f of x is equal to x squared. If a is greater than one, so if it's a whole number like two, three, four, etc., then you have a vertical stretch. Okay, so that's exactly like um, absolute value functions. So you can see here in this graph, if it's a if it's greater than one, like right here, then your your U-shaped function is going to be more narrow. This right here. Let me use different colors right here. So if this middle one right here, if I draw it as the orange one, okay, this is the parent function and a is equal to one. So y is equal to one times x squared, which is equal just to x squared, right? That's the parent function, okay? If a is greater than one, so like the blue line that we have there, it gets more narrow. If a is less than one, then you get this line right here, this green line right here, and it's obviously going to be more compressed. Um, and then there's of course the fact that you can have a negative. So if a is less than zero, so this is whenever you have y is equal to negative a x squared. So if you have negative a x squared, then you're going to have a reflection over the x-axis, okay? And the rules still apply. So if you, in this term, so if a is if a is between negative one and zero, so like if you have a is equal to negative one half or negative two thirds or negative one fourth, then you're going to have a shrink and a reflection. So you have a shrink and a reflection. So that's going to be like this right here. It's reflected and it's more compressed. And then if A is just negative 1, then you're just going to have just the reflection with no stretch or shrink. And then if you have if a is greater or less than negative one, so if you have negative two, negative three, negative four, then your graph is going to be more narrow, so it's a vertical stretch, and it's a reflection. So it's going to be both. Okay, so this are all very similar concepts that we learned in chapter one, right, with absolute value functions. Now, some characteristics. We already went over some characteristics. We went over what the vertex is and what the axis of symmetry is. Okay, so the only other thing, uh, other characteristics that we want to talk about is when the function is decreasing versus when the function is increasing. Okay, so a function is decreasing. You can see here that the slope of your parabola on the left side is decreasing. We have a negative slope, right? So it's kind of like saying that your slope is negative. And then on the right side, you have a positive slope, right? So decreasing is when the slope is going down, and increasing is when the slope is going up. So in order to see this, what I like to do is where I see that the function is going down, I'll, I like to use two different colors. So here I'll draw where the function is decreasing and notice here that it stops decreasing at the vertex okay and then on the x-axis right here I'll color in the part of the x-axis that it is beneath or above and then I'll do the same for increasing I see that it's increasing here and so on the x-axis I'm going to also color where it's increasing right there <laughs> so um, that's how I like to describe it, and so um, we'll go over examples of how you can actually put this into correct notation. So examples one and two, it says to identify characteristics of the quadratic function. So we want to know the vertex, axis of symmetry, so the vertex, axis of symmetry, decreasing, and increasing. Okay, so remember the vertex is the lowest or the highest point. 
So for number one, the lowest point occurs right here. So what um, is the point? Remember that vertex is a point of x comma y. So how many? If I start at the origin right here, which is zero zero. Remember x comma y. Then what do? How many times do I move to the left in the x direction? the right and how many times do I move up or down in the y direction so from the origin I go over negative one and then up positive one so my vertex is negative one positive one now the axis of symmetry is a remember it's a vertical line that cuts the that cuts the parabola in half and so, axis of symmetry, if I were to draw my line here, I would cut it in half. Right there. Notice that the axis of symmetry always cuts through the vertex. And it cuts through right here. This line right here is x is equal to negative 1, right? This is negative 1 on the x-axis. So that's your axis of symmetry, is x is equal to negative 1. And, get, and the axis of symmetry is always going to be the x-coordinate of your vertex. Remember that the axis of symmetry is always the x, the x the x value of your vertex. And so, when is it decreasing versus increasing? Okay. So, decreasing. Remember when it's going down. That's whenever it's decreasing. So I see that it's decreasing right here and it decreases all the way up to the point of the the vertex and it is increasing that's when it changes from decreasing to increasing so we're increasing right there so that isn't how you write uh, where it's decreasing or increasing though notice here that now I'm gonna go back over my x-axis and I'm gonna color below where the green is like that and then here, I'll color this side. Okay, so you want to describe the increasing and decreasing as x values. Okay, so just as you would like the domain and range. Okay, as an interval. So I know that this function is decreasing from negative infinity, this is negative infinity on the x, this is positive infinity on the x. So it's increasing from negative infinity all the way up to zero. Or uh, negative one, sorry, negative one. And I am increasing starting at this point right here on the x, which is negative one, all the way to positive infinity. That's how you describe increasing versus decreasing. All right, let's try this again on number two. So we need to know, it wants to know the characteristics. So we have the vertex. The vertex, again, is the lowest or highest point. Notice here that this is reflected, so we're going to have a high point. The highest point would be right there. So how many times on the x do I go over? Well, I go over 1, 2, 3. So I know my vertex is going to be 3, comma, and then I go up 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would be my vertex. The axis of symmetry is the line that it cuts, the, the vertical line that cuts the parabola in half, and remember that it's an x value here, right? Is neg is three on the x-axis, and that's going that's the x coordinate of our x value of our vertex, and they are going to be the same. So the axis of symmetry is x is equal to three. Okay, now where is the function increase decreasing and increasing? Okay, so this one's going to be an opposite from what we did over here. Uh, the left half on number one was decreasing and the right half was increasing. So you see here that we are actually increasing right here. We're going upwards. 
So we're increasing from there to there. And then at the vertex, we change from increasing to decreasing. So we're going down now. And again, I like to color my x my x axis, so I'm decre I'm increasing from here, from negative infinity all the way up to that point, and this is positive infinity, right? So from negative infinity all the way up to three. So I am increasing from negative infinity to three. And here. I am decreasing from 3 to positive infinity. Decreasing from here all the way to infinity. <laughs> okay. Now let's jump down to these exercises right here. So in exercises 3 through 8, it says to graph. And we want to compare the graph to the parent function. Okay, so let me first draw my x and my y axis. So I'm going to draw my x axis here, my y axis here. This is my x and this is my y. And to do this, I'm going to draw in a table. Okay, so I'm going to draw a table of x right there. And then I'm going to do f of x. And I'm also going to draw in g of x g of x is the parent function f of, f of x is the parent function g of x is this function right there okay so one second let me redraw that line right there all right so I'm going to start with 0, and I'm going to write it right there. So first of all, before I get too much into this, what I want you guys to remember and learn and to just ingrain into your head is this important fact. Okay, so f of x right here, know that f of x, which is also the same thing as y, right? These are called output variables. output variables. X is called an input variable. Okay? This is very important to know whenever we're talking about transformations, okay? The reason why it's important is so you know what you're changing, okay? So Remember that f of x is just any sort of like, so g of x here, this is also an output variable. So notice here that g of x is equal to 5x squared. So 5x squared and g of x are, output ver are, are outputs, okay? While the x is an input. So input. g of x, which is equal to 5x squared, is output. Okay, remember that. All right, so this means I'm going to input, right? X is the input, and the f of x and g of x is what I get out, so the output, okay? So if I input zero into f of x, I get zero squared, which is just gonna be zero. If I plug it into g of x, I get five times zero squared, which is also zero, okay? So when my input is zero, my output is zero for both of them. Okay, so I know that my vertex will be right here, zero, zero. Okay, next, well I, gu I guess I don't know that that is my, um, that we actually don't know if that is my vertex, but we will eventually. But when I put in zero, I get zero, okay. And then, So I'll do this in green, I'll do this one in orange. Okay, and then I want to put in 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 2, and 3. Okay, so when I input negative 1 first into f of x, so if I do negative 1 squared, well negative 1 squared is going to be 1. 
if I put it in 1, then it's going to be 1 squared, which is also 1. Okay, so I know f of x, when it's negative 1 or 1, is positive 1. So whenever it's 1 or negative 1, it's going to be 1. So this is 1 and negative 1 on the x, and this is 1 on the y. When I plug negative 2 into the function, so f of negative 2, I get negative 2 squared, which is going to equal 4. So I get 4 here, but then if I also put in positive 4, I will get 4 as well. And then if I put 3 and negative 3 into the function, I'm going to get into f of x, I'm going to get 9 and 9. You see here how going both in the negatives and in the positive direction on the x, my y's are the same. I get 1 and 1, 4 and 4, 9 and 9. Okay? So when it's 2, it's going to be 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. When it's 3, it's going to be 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And it's symmetrical. So basically what I'm just trying to point out is that this is symmetrical. And then if I connect everything, it looks like this. Okay. Now let's do g of x right here. So for g of x, if I put negative 1 into the function, and 1 into the function, so if I do g of negative 1, I'm going to get 5 times negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1, so I'm going to get 5. Okay. So I know it's symmetrical, so when I put in 1 on this side, it's also going to be 5. So by the way, we did verify that this is the vertex, because it is the lowest point. All right, now let's put in 2 into g of x. So if I do g of 2 or negative 2, I'm going to get 5 times by 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 5 is 20, right? Okay, so I'll get 20. If I put in 3 or negative 3, so g of 3 or negative 3, I'll get 5 times 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. So I'll get 45 for this output. And what do we notice about the different output numbers? Remember, f of x and g of x are outputs. So what do we notice about their outputs right here? What is the difference between the parent function and g of x? Notice here that g of x is 5 times larger than the outputs of f of x. So the outputs of g of x are 5 times larger than the outputs of f of x. And the reason why that is, is because in g of x we are multiplying everything by 5. We are multiplying the outputs by 5. Okay, So that's why it's going to be 5 times greater. Okay, so if we were to graph this, we know that whenever x is 1 or negative 1, our output is going to be 5. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be right there. And then when it's 2, it's going to be 20, which is going to be way up there. But I know that I'm going to go up like that. So my function should look something like that. Very narrow, right? It's very narrow. So this is a vertical stretch. Okay. I'm actually going to erase all this, so if you still need it, make sure to pause the video, but I'm going to erase everything. Um, well, I guess I'll keep my graphs there. But let's move on to, let's say, number 6. So for number 6, we have L of x. So again, I'm going to write in, I'm going to first do my, as I draw this, I know that this is negative right here, so I know I'm going to be reflected. So my shape is going to be downward. 
So I'm actually going to draw in right here my x and my y axis right here. I'm going to draw in my table of x, f of x, and this time I have l of x. And I'll do the same thing. I'll start with 0. And let's see what happens when we plug 0. Well, we actually already know f of x from the last time that we did this, right? So for f of x, which is the parent function, when we plug in 0, we get 0. We plug in 1, it's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, and 3. The parent function, we get 1, 4, 9, 1, 4, and 9. For L of X, though, let's see what we get when we plug in inputs for L of X. Okay. Now, we won't really see the parent function. Remember that the parent function is open upward like that. So we know our parent function goes up like that. So let's say we plug in negative 1 and positive 1 into our function. Okay. So if we do that, we get negative 7 times by 1 squared, which is going to be negative 7. So when x is 1, or negative 1, we get 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we know that the first point is 0. So here's going to be 0, 7, and 7. So when x is 0, L of x is 0. And when x is 1 or negative 1, it's going to be positive 7. Okay, now let's plug in 2 or negative 2 into our function. So L of 2 is equal to negative 7 times by 2 squared. And that's equal to negative 7 times by 4. And that's equal to uh, negative 28, I believe. Okay, so again, that's going to be pretty far up there. So my function should look like this very narrow okay so this is going to be oh this is negative 7 negative 7 sorry so negative 28 and negative 28 and I'm not really concerned about what my function is going to be at 3 because it's already off of our graph but just know here that it's symmetrical about the the vertex right or the axis of symmetry okay and notice here that instead of that um, here, the difference between the outputs here and the outputs here is that this is all being multiplied by negative 7. Multiplied by negative 7, which makes sense right here, right? Multiply x squared by negative 7. Okay. Let's do one more. Let's go and do number 7. So again, I'm going to draw my table right here. Okay, in the first column I do my inputs, and then I'm going to do my parent function output, and then n of x, which is the other output function that we have. Um, I'll put in, uh, all these functions that we're dealing with actually have a vertex of 0, 0. So I'm just going to start there at 0, 0, because I know that's what it's going to be. Okay. That's going to be 0 this is going to be 0, okay, and then let's do it for inputs, one, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, negative 3, <laughs> let's draw in our axis, so first of all we know this is negative, so it's going to be open downward, so I'm going to draw my axis right here, okay, just like that, and I know that the parent function starts at 0, 0, and it goes upward. Okay, and now let's graph, and we know the parent outputs of the parent function, f of x, this is going to be 1, 4, 9, 1, 4, 9. For uh, n of x, let's, that's what we're trying to find, so let's graph that.
So we know that the vertex is at 0, 0 because 0, 0. Okay, now let's plug in negative 1 or positive 1. They'll be the same output. So if we did n of negative 1, this is equal to negative 1 over 5 times by negative 1 squared, and that's going to be negative 1 over 5. So negative 1 over 5, and this will be um, negative 1 over 5. Okay, now let's do 2. So if we do n of 2, we get this is equal to negative 1 over 5 times by 2 squared, which is equal to negative 1 over 5. 2 squared is 4, so that's going to equal to 4 over 5. So negative 4 over 5, oh yeah, it's going to be negative, and negative 4 over 5. Let's try doing 3 and negative 3. So n of 3, this is going to be equal to negative 1 over 5 times by 3 squared which is equal to 9, right? 3 squared is 9, so negative 9 over 5. So negative 9 over 5 and, po and negative 9 over 5. Okay, so when x is 1 and negative 1, we get 1 fifth. So that's like just barely like right there. Barely beneath the x-axis, right? If this is negative 1, then we won't even touch that. When x is 2 and negative 2, we get negative 4 fifths, so it's still not even quite negative 1, so we'll be like right here. When x is 3, or negative 3, we get 9 over 5, so that is not quite close to 2, so that should be like right here, like that. So we know our parabola will look something like this. Okay. So we see the reflection, and this is going to be a vertical shrink, because we are multiplying the outputs by one-fifth, by negative one-fifth, right? Multiply this by negative one over five, multiply this by negative one over five, and that by negative one over five. Okay, so hopefully you understand that. So that should do it for 3.1, and in 3.2, we're going to learn about vertical shifts, okay? So um, that should be everything, and I'll see you guys in class.